Mr. Miller? Here. Commissioner Reed? Not here. Commissioner R. Curry? Here. Commissioner Maya? Here. Commissioner Grabman? Here. Vice Chair uh, Glazier is not here. And Chair Houghton? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hester, any changes to the agenda? Chair Houghton, no changes to the agenda. Okay, thank you. Notices that on Friday, August 11, 2023, at 5 p.m., the Airport Commission Secretary, Ms. Graham, duly posted this agenda on the bulletin board at Airport Administration. The next section, public comment. Um, Mo, you've already given me a few speaker forms. Are there any additional ones? Okay, so we have two requests for speakers, Charlie Kolstadt and uh, Craig Alexander. Charlie, why don't we let you go first, and uh, you have uh, three minutes to speak. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Feel free to cut me off if I'm... <laughs> don't see the bashful. time properly. Very well. So I'm, my name is Charlie Kolstad. I'm a uh, professor of environmental economics and management uh, at UCSB and Stanford University. I recently retired. Um, I've lived on the north side of Moore Mesa for, uh, near Hope Ranch off and on for 30 years, so I've, I've observed the operations of the airport from, from a distance. Um, I think, I think uh, what I want to talk about today is, is noise, and I want to talk about it from a point of view not of a complaint, but as a, as a threat to the airport. I think if you look at the entire country, What's happened with noise, it's caused airports to get moved out to the exurbs. I mean, look at DFW, look at IAD, Dulles, Washington, Dulles, look at the big airports. I mean, look at Santa Monica, little airport. It's being closed largely because of noise. So I, I'm, I'm concerned about the Santa Barbara Airport. I love being able to wear my flyer hat and take off somewhere, anywhere. Uh, and I'd, I'd like the noise problem solved so that we can keep our airport as it grows, un undoubtedly it will. So that's really what my comments are about. I'd like to make some specific suggestions to deal with that. Uh, as everybody here knows, there was a Part 150 study about 20 years ago that identified a uh, v what they call a VNAP, what you call a VNAP, a Voluntary Noise Abatement Program. Uh, that particularly focuses on, uh, on Moore Mesa. Uh, and there was a suggestion in that that beacons be placed on, on the approach so, so that a pilot, when they see this, this mass of land, to know exactly what we're talking about with, with, the, um, with the voluntary noise, ab noise abatement approach. Now, in terms of success, I'd say that uh, scheduled airlines are doing pretty well. They, and, I, and I think all pilots are, the, you know, there's no evil pilots. They all would like to do well, but they're just unaware or don't think they matter. But the commercial pilots, and I mean the ones that fly United or Southwest, do quite well. One puzzle I have is that violations often come in bunches. And if it's a random violation, you'd expect it to be random. If it's in bunches, it means somebody is telling them to fly a different route over a residential area. And I, I don't know how to fix that, but maybe, maybe you guys know how to fix that. The smaller commercial jets, and you know, these are not private jets, as you all know. This is NetJet, um, Surfair, um, other, other commercial jets. They pay absolutely no attention to the voluntary noise abatement program, uh, totally oblivious to it. And so I, I, I think they, they are the worst offenders. And of course, Friday afternoon and Sunday uh, afternoon is, is the worst. So l my request to the airport commission is in the short run to improve communication to pilots about the VNAP program. It doesn't seem to be on the ATIS system. I listened to it this afternoon. And it's supposed to be, I think. Uh, increase the feedback to pilots if they violate the um, this, this, the uh, program, 
and pursue placing the beacons on, on the Mesa so that, that it makes it a lot easier to, to follow it. Okay, you'll have to wrap it up, Mr. Goldstaff. Yeah, just one point. The long t in the long term, I would recommend pursuing extending runway 15 uh, to the north and south. You've got about 8,500 feet there between the 101 and the War Memorial, and um, that would s solve this noise problem, I think, permanently for the airport. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your comments are spot on. It's, we certainly are discussing these very similar things, so I appreciate t taking time out of your schedule to, to appear. Okay, and then uh, we've got Craig Alexander, Santa Barbara Aviators. I hope I can do this in three minutes. <laughs> Um, I just coming here for good news today. Uh, I just want to introduce myself for those who don't know me. I'm Craig Alexander. Um, Taylor and I are the co-founders and manage the SBA Aviators. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the SBA Aviators, we consist of 260 members, private and commercial pilots, ATC, students, CFIs, the FBOs, and the Flying Club. Uh, our motto has always been communication and education. So I'm here today just to kind of brief, debrief you real quickly on this past Sunday's uh, first uh, SB Aviators Fly-In Picnic. Um, I gave you a look at, uh, there are handouts here. Uh, the purpose of the handouts are, just take a peek, they're all smiling faces there. Um, not bad. Uh, five months ago when we started with talking about this fly-in, uh, it started off as something just kind of for GA, general aviation, and then it morphed into just something much bigger. Initially, we were only going to allow 20 planes to come in, and that was going to be our goal and limit. Um, and just to let you know, every non-resident plane that came to uh, the fly-in uh, was given uh, the policy on noise abatement. Uh, so we're doing our thing as a community. Um, during the uh, fly-in, every, pl every plane was escorted in. Uh, they were towed into parking. There were absolutely no live props going on. Uh, I just, so you know it's safety was our number one concern, when, especially when we had the public around. Just to give you some quick stats, uh, we had just over 200 attendees. Uh, we had uh, issued, we had 30 planes uh, planned to come, 25 of them did come. We turned down 21 additional planes, so the interest was there. Uh, our pilots came all the way from Montgomery down in San Diego, uh, from all the way up to Concord up in the East Bay. Um, just This was our first event. Um, the publicity we kept under control. We didn't go overboard with this. You know, we just wanted, you know, the first one to go well. Um, we did okay, and you know, I'll, I'll be frank with you. You know what? We didn't break even, but we only lost $140. That's not <laughs> bad for everything that happened. Um, just some more stats. T we believe 25% of the attendees were from the public and uh, were not affiliated with aviation. Of those, I know of two personally, um, members of the public came inquiring about and I know one of them came back with his parents a little bit later and just wanted to, just wanted to uh, find out about it. Um, okay, you have to wrap up, Mr. Alexander. Okay, I just need, um, it didn't go 100% as planned, but you know what, 95% 90, of it went well. Um, and now I just, I need to say something, and if you noticed, I have it marked in red. And this is important for everybody in this commission. This was all about teamwork. The whole thing. Uh, the airport administration, Chris, you guys did a great job. Operations, Mike and Matt, kick butt. Civil Air Patrol was, uh, cadets were involved. 
Sheriff's Air Squadron were, was involved, Clipper Aviation, the Fire Department, Signature and Atlantic. Um, you know what, you guys were great, the Corona Flyers. ATC was involved, and believe me, they were hustling, moving around planes. Uh, the Santa Barbara Flying Club was involved. Most importantly, the uh, SBA aviators, and if we were in public forum, I'd ask them, everybody for applause. <laughs> I'm gonna end up right now. GA is alive and well in Santa Barbara, and it's becoming more and more united, and it's getting stronger and stronger. In the beginning, I said the SB Aviators was about education and communication. Well, we're gonna add a number three, and it's about community. Um, we look forward to next year's fly-in, and uh, there is a video being made of the fly-in. It will be, should be available on our website over the weekend, and if anybody has any questions, feel, they know how to get in touch with me, feel free to ask. Thank you, Mr. Alexander, a job well done. So, okay, we're going to move on. Are there any additional comments, uh, Mo? Any additional? No, it's more uh, speaker slips. I see that our city council member's desk is empty, so I'm going to assume that we do not have uh, uh, council member Eric Friedman or council member James Croco that's going to be speaking tonight, so I think we'll move on. Uh, to the airport director report, uh, I'd like to call on uh, Director Hastert to provide that report. Thank you, Chair Houghton, and uh, just to piggyback on what uh, Craig had mentioned, uh, it was a, a joint effort to uh, bring staff together to assist in having a general aviation event. Uh, when I was hired, I was told to uh, help to promote general aviation on the field and, and make sure that the general aviation community is addressed and, and isn't left behind. And so this was, as Craig mentioned, one of hopefully many events that we'll have in the future, not necessarily all with SBA aviators, maybe some other fun things like the B-17 coming in and other things, but uh, uh, definitely my staff really enjoyed helping out with the event, volunteered to come in on a Sunday to, to do that without me asking them to. And uh, it was uh, overall great, great communication and cooperation from everybody that Craig mentioned involved, including air traffic control. Uh, just going down the list, there's quite a few different little things going on. Um, Angie Doss with the marketing team has some filming going on in the terminal in the community, doing some PSA type messaging for the terminal improvement project and then just the airport overall. So I will be excited to share some of that with you in the future as that uh, is finished. Uh, south side construction, uh, if you've been near the terminal on the south side by Hangar 5, you'll notice that uh, it is all fenced off now and uh, we had uh, a couple of minor little hiccups with um, access being shifted over from where Surf Air is at gate P59 over to uh, near above all with a new pedestrian gate that's going in there, but I think that has all been smoothed over now. And uh, I think very shortly you will see uh, Hangar 5 uh, starting to uh, be dismantled to be reassembled somewhere else here locally. Uh, the permit program that we have for the independent flight instructors is has been kicked off. We have the fee established, and we have several applications now from uh, independent flight instructors as well as maintenance, so that is going well. I attended a CAC, which is the uh, California Airports uh, Council meeting. Uh, it's all of the commercial service airport directors um, for California get together quarterly and uh, go over pending legislation. So um, it was interesting timing. There's two bills that are out right now for that affect airports. One of them concerns Turo. If you've ever heard of Turo, it's a vehicle sharing app and system. So it basically takes the place of a rental car. You can, you can put your car on there and lend it out to somebody else for a fee. Uh, so that actually cuts into our revenue here at the airport and they don't have a permit currently at Santa Barbara. So there is, legislation to require them if they're going to operate out of an airport uh, to obtain a permit. I think they already saw the writing on the wall so they reached out to us directly and I have uh, John Feldhans looking into uh, putting a permit together for them which will be uh, consistent with our existing rental car agreements for the, the percentage rent uh, for all of the transactions that happen here on the airport. Uh, as well as an interesting bill that uh, we are uh, against, which is for corporate jet reporting. Um, I, you've probably seen in the news that there's a, a lot of stories about celebrities taking, uh, you know, a 10 passenger or plus jet as one person across the country and maybe it ferrying back empty and what that does to the environment. 
So there's a, a state bill out there that wants airports to report on the activity of those corporate aircraft. Uh, we are not in the business of dealing with the corporate aircraft. The FBOs are, are the ones that handle those. So we think that it's a, a task that is not being looked at the right way. So I'll bring more information back on that. If that comes to fruition, it's turned into a two-year bill. So not likely to happen, at least for a year. We had our SBA terminal project open house. Uh, it was hosted over at Direct Relief across the street. Uh, they were a great uh, host and uh, we had a, a really good turnout from the public and the media and a lot of interest in the terminal and, and I think it went very well. Uh, switching over is a good introduction uh, from Mr. Colstead on the city council meeting for August 22nd, we will be discussing the council response to the city of Goleta's noise letter. So this was the noise letter with some recommendations that was brought up by the city of Goleta. It went to the council. The council um, pushed that back down to the commission for some guidance on several topics. It's now going back to the council to go back to Goleta. And uh, I think Mr. Colston will be happy to see a lot of what's in there is similar things to what he is discussing with communications, looking to update our Part 150 noise study, uh, forming a noise committee, including residents from different neighborhoods. Um, so I'm ex excited to keep that process moving. I think it'll be great for the community overall. We uh, also on that agenda is the um, ability for me to accept the award of the grant for the project, which we will speak about in just a minute. So that is on there for a $6 million uh, FAA grant. And then just really quickly going through the reports that are in the packet, um, you will notice that um, we had a slight downturn this month for the first time in a long time, about 6.26 or 6.62 percent down for June over June, uh, but we are still up. 10.9% year over year on passengers. Uh, I think that um, you'll see probably a, potentially a little dip in July as well when we get those numbers. There was a lot of weather related issues, not specific to Santa Barbara, but on the East Coast that caused a lot of cancellations on United. Uh, but looking at the future, things are still looking very good. Um, United is increasing uh, their service to San Francisco in November with three mainline and one EM, uh, one Embraer to San Francisco each day. Uh, third flight to Denver coming back in August and September and uh, the second flight to LAX being back permanently on the schedule so a lot of good uh, activity and then uh, last but not least is the budget report uh, closing out last year still subject to change a little bit because there are some um, last-minute closeout items with the city reporting uh, but overall, looking like revenues were right on target and expenditures were about 8% below budget. So everything looking good. Great. Thank you, uh, Director Hastert. Uh, any questions or comments from our commissioners? Uh, Mr. Maya. A question about the Turo app. Um, is there a model that we use with uh, Uber and Lyft that would be similar to how that works as far as attaching a, a use fee for the operators? So, Commissioner Ryan, right, yes, it's it's very similar in that it's very similar in that it, it will have a geofence that is, is based at the airport, a slightly different type of operation because you're not getting into somebody else's vehicle. So there's a handoff of a vehicle. Uh, so we're looking at what area would be appropriate to do that handoff. Uh, we have an agreement from Ontario Airport that we can kind of model it off of that's working very well. So, but yeah, geofenced and a set fee and it's all just computer based and reported to us. Uh, Commissioner Curry. A couple of questions. Um, over on the um, south side, uh, is the, hang the people who bought or uh, Hangar 5, is that still going to get taken apart and moved? Uh, my understanding is yes, it was delayed with um, needing the project to move forward for the fencing for the uh, AOA and uh, stormwater requirements, things like that. But now that the project is underway with our general contractor. Um, that enables the, the company to come in and dismantle that hangar, which will be uh, rebuilt somewhere locally. Hmm. Um, and then I remember uh, during the process of us interviewing people for your position, um, I remember myself, the city council, voicing uh, wanting to know more and be more involved in the airport. So 
I was going to ask this question a little bit differently if either if our Santa Barbara City Council member was here, but did any city council members come to that wonderful SB Aviators event, I wonder? Uh, so this wasn't initially designed to be a big public event. It, was, it started off just with looking at some of our local pilots to have a right. picnic, which it grew into a little bit more. Um, so we didn't actively uh, invite Recruit them to come out. Right. Okay. Uh, and honestly, uh, I think we wanted to dip our toes in the water a little bit and make sure that we <laughs> knew what it. we were doing before we start calling too much attention to ourselves. That makes sense. But we okay. did have two commission, at least two commission members that were there with right. Levi and Topaz. Right on. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any other comments or questions? Okay, uh, Mo, any additional speaker forms? Okay, we're going to move on um, to the consent calendar, one of my favorite part, spots of the uh, agenda. Um, in the past, we used to individually vote on these, but now we essentially um, review the agenda prior to the meeting, and then um, if there's any questions or need for discussion, uh, we do that uh, before uh, moving on. So I'd like to ask our Commissioners, if you have any questions or clarifications on the consent calendar items. Okay, so, um, and there are no speaker forms, Mo, on the consent calendar? Okay. Uh, Actually, um, so, on here, is this saying that above all is moving locations? Is that? Yes. Okay. So it's moving into the visitor center. And is that going somewhere else? Uh, currently looking for a home for the visitor center, but uh, yes, it would be taking the place of the current visitor center. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my only comment is I'm pleased to see that Capella Partners is going to be uh, leasing one of our properties at 6100 Hollister Avenue. Uh, I'm involved with the uh, California Nano Systems Institute and their incubator, so it's nice to see these companies supporting UCSB uh, be in our facility. So happy to see that. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion for approval of the consent calendar, uh, commissioners. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Uh, we have a motion from Commissioner Curry. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I'll call for a vote. All in favor. Aye. 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 We have a unanimous um, vote to, uh, to uh, pass the motion. Next section, administrative reports. I'm going to call on uh, Director Haster to introduce item number 10, which is an update on aircraft marking, signage, and lighting upgrades project. Thank you, Chair Houghton. I just wanted to give a very brief update. Um, and this is a project that the public d won't see much about and doesn't really affect them very much but it really does change a lot on the airport and especially for our pilot community has a, a very large impact um, i also have uh, phil davis here uh, in the audience he's our project engineer who's uh, helping me out if there's any questions but the project that we're talking about is the airport marking sign and lighting project and um Sorry. You have three minutes, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it in two and a half. So I'm just, actually, I'm going to start at the beginning like I had it. So this project uh, uh, basically will replace all of the remaining incandescent lights on the field and switching them over to LED uh, will fix us to where we're on a true uh, pilot-controlled lighting system, like a lot of airports out there, so we don't leave the lights on all night long, saving uh, some energy costs. Uh, and then the biggest change is that the FAA has changed the, how airports should design their taxiways and the nomenclature and, and how they connect up to the runways. And so there was an engineering brief that the FAA released. Our consultant uh, took a look at that and came out with this taxiway uh, designation. So this is the part that I just wanted to let you know about. It's going to be um, a lot of phasing. We're going to have, I believe it's eight phases to make all of these changes to the different taxiways and, and keep the operations going while we do that. But what you will see is um, you have parallel taxiways like taxiway Alpha and taxiway Bravo, and then the connections to the runway are switching to alphanumeric. So you would have 
Uh, you can see there on the left there's alpha 4, alpha 3 um, heading to the east, alpha 2. Uh, all of those parallel taxiways will have alphanumeric off of them. Um, what that does is it, it makes it a safer environment for a pilot because if you know where you're trying to get to and you're given an instruction for alpha and alpha 3 and you normally as you're taxiing out right now you would see oh, I can't even see that far right now but uh, papa and <laughs> uh, so yeah alpha papa and, and uh, some of the other actually I have it right here need better glasses yeah, so Foxtrot and November and Papa off to the left is now that Alpha uh, 4, 3, and 2. So it's just much easier to know where you are on the airfield, where you're going, and that's the new FAA standard. So um, that's the biggest thing that I just wanted to update you on. That was the grant that I mentioned, the $6 million grant, changes all of that lighting, some markings on the airport, and then as well as all of the signage. And just make you aware that that project is going to be kicking off relatively soon. Uh, Royal Electric will be um, recommended to be awarded that contract um, uh, fairly soon at a city council meeting. And uh, again, you won't see any changes, especially if you're traveling public. The airplanes are still going to come in and out and they're going to taxi to the areas they want to taxi to. Uh, but the local pilots that use this field um, are going to have to go through a lot of change in their in their memory uh, on, on how to get out there. Um, I do also have another sheet that shows just how well it works. So when if uh, the project goes forward for extending the current taxiway hotel, that actually becomes Bravo, and then those connectors are Bravo two and Bravo three. So it's just a it makes a lot of sense and is uh, very well thought out. Uh, it's one of the things that I can say the FAA I think did a good job in this regard. And then both Phil and I are available if you have any questions. Uh, commissioners, uh, any questions of Director Hester? I have a question. Um, so the FAA. So this is a project here. Is the FAA kind of, um, to your knowledge, rolling this out at all airports that don't have markings like that? So it, it's phased. And so because we receive um, grant funding from the FAA, we're supposed to try to beat the advisory circulars for how the FAA administrator wants us to right. design and run the airport. And so every airport that receives grant funding um, through the master plan process has to look at taxiway geometry and all of these type of things and incorporate that into their future plan. So there's no specific deadline that we have to have this done, uh, but definitely at some point if we want to continue that FAA funding, we have to maintain our compliance with the current standards. And I'm sure this goes without saying, and I'm sure Topaz was thinking the same thing, but the Bravo echo change is going to be interesting. Just You're right, this makes more sense. Um, but since Bravo used to cross 2-5 and now it doesn't, I'm, I'm sure when markings start happening, the tower folks are going to be, the ground folks are, there's going to be a lot of collaboration and very patiently working together to make sure we're all going in the right direction. It, Commissioner Urquhart, you're exactly right, and that's why we want to give you an update about this tonight, just to remind people that this is coming. Um, there's a lot of good things that the FAA even changed their own design on. You can see Taxiway Delta actually comes down, crosses all the way over. Um, so that's, that's um, rather than having a Delta 1 or a Delta 2 in that, right. they, they let us have a little bit of flexibility uh, where, where it matters. And so I, I I, looking at this from somebody who wasn't here when it was designed, I don't see any changes that I would recommend to it. I think right. our consultant did a very good job of putting this together. And when when is this scheduled to start? So, we so it gets, I'm, hold on, follow up. There's there's both a lighting project and a signage project. It's all one project. All one project. When is this scheduled to start? Phil, if you want to come up to that microphone. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, this project, we next month, we have a recommendation with City Council to award uh, to the low bidder, Royal Electric. And we are anticipating to break ground at the start of the new year. And the breaking ground part would, like, I guess I, guess I view electrical changes as ground-related and signage as paint. Yeah, so as I mentioned, there's going to be eight phases to this project, and um, that will incorporate all of the different elements. Got so uh, we really don't want to be working on the whole airport all at one time. So it's right. going to be phased where we're working and making sure that we don't have 
uh, two taxiway echoes or two taxiway bravos. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Commissioners, any additional questions? Uh, Commissioner Maya. Uh, just the structure of the financing for it. It's a $6 million project. Um, and is that a 90% match from the FAA? And how, how's that allocated? And a follow up to that would be. Um, where just give us kind of a broad overview of what are the most expensive things that are part of this project. Six million dollars sounds like a lot of money to paint and change signs, so I'm but I'm sure there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, and I don't know if Phil has the breakdown from the the bids or not, or if you have that in your memory what the expensive parts of the design were. Uh, but I can tell you the funding part of it. Uh, it's a it's a strange formula because of state apportionment and other things, but it's 90.66 percent paid for by the FAA. Uh, with our a uh, little bit less than 10% match. Uh, it comes th from our entitlement fund, so the AIP project, uh, based on how many employments we have, we get a certain amount of um, airport improvement program entitlement funds, uh, and that's where this is coming out of. So this is the money that we know is out there. We know that we are getting for these projects and actually have the award from the FAA uh, waiting to be accepted as soon as we get council approval. And then, Phil, I don't know if you, off the top of your head, know what the expensive parts are of the project. I mean, it's anything dealing with FAA specifications for signs and all of that all gets expensive, but. Uh. Uh, so I don't have the exact bid quantity sheets in front of me, so, but I can say that all this work, since it is a complicated phasing operation, it all is during off-peak tower hours, so it's all at night, so that does inflate. Uh, construction costs and labor. Uh, another thing is just upgrading all the taxiway lighting to the newest LED generation and then just all the runway lighting as well. And it's just it's just the sheer scale of redoing all the pavements and also the signage at each of uh, the taxiway uh, when it intersects a runway or another taxiway. Yeah, I, I can uh, bring back uh, the actual bid sheet so you can actually see how the breakdown was uh, I can provide that to you as well when it's all over we'll have 100% LED energy efficient lighting though on the field and that's every blue taxiway light every sign every uh, yes yeah. all of the um, uh, anything that's currently not LED is being switched over great thanks okay uh, any additional comments from the commissioners my only comment is uh, realizing that the birthplace of the modern LED is right here at UCSB, so it's good to see it being implemented in our airfield. And just it's just a good thing to uh, continue to uh, convert to LEDs and gain energy efficiency. So I, I think I think this is great. And last but not least, I just want to acknowledge staff, past and present to get this award. It's a $6 million award. Uh, writing these grants is tedious, a lot of hard work. I suspect that the people that started this may not be here, but I uh, want to acknowledge their, their hard work. And we have no motion or vote for this particular item. And uh, I don't think we have any speaker requests on it. Um, so um, I'm moving to adjournment unless someone comes up with another reason to tackle Another issue I'm, I'm missing. I'm adjourning this meeting at uh, 6.34. We can all be home in time for first pitch by Kershaw tonight and with the Dodgers. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>